Welcome back to Smart Home Daycare, where we help you to have the successful home daycare that you deserve. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your own homemade hand sanitizer. Hi, my name is Kelly and I've been an in-home daycare provider since 2008. Since then I have learned the tips and tricks on how to run a successful home daycare. And I've also helped countless women over the years to help them with their struggles and wins with their own home daycares. Today is a scary time for us home daycare providers since we have the coronavirus that we are navigating through. And if you're like us here, we are out of hand sanitizer in most of our big box and local stores. So if we don't have access to hand sanitizer or a sink with soap, what are we to do? We can actually make our own hand sanitizer and that is what we're gonna talk about today. According to the CDC, you need at least 60% alcohol content to have effective disinfecting properties. So we are actually going to be using 70%. There are a lot of recipes out there that say you can use 91% or 99% and those are great as well. However, those are even being limited in the stores uh, here currently. So we do have 70% and that is what we're gonna be using today. Uh, the reason for the higher content is because we are going to be mixing it with aloe vera gel. This is what's going to protect the strength from the rubbing alcohol on your skin by mixing it with the aloe vera. You can also add some essential oils to your mixture for the aroma and scent that you're looking for. Fun fact, you can even use vodka or ethanol to uh, make your hand sanitizer as well. However, you need to make sure that it is at least 180 proof to make sure you get the uh, high enough alcohol content that you need for effective hand sanitizer. A couple notes before we get started is to make sure when you do make your mixture and you're rubbing it on your hand, to make sure that it is dry before you go and, and touch things. To make it effective, it needs to soak in and it needs to be dry on your hands. Also, hand sanitizer is only good for getting kind of surface dirt off of your hands and getting killing any bacteria that you have on your hands. If your hands are greasy or have dirt or particles on your hands, that is going to always be best with soap and water. Uh, optimally, always wash your hands with soap and water and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. So make sure that if you are using hand sanitizer, this is just the things to keep in your bag um, when you're on the go and you don't have access to soap and warm water. Please know, if you are working with infants and toddlers and preschoolers, hand sanitizer is not recommended for children age two and under. Uh, their skin is very sensitive and it, it doesn't dry, you know, they tend to put their hands in their mouth. So washing little one's hands with soap and warm water is most beneficial and optimal for children ages two and under for your daycare. You can also use rubbing alcohol as a cleaning product for your toys and other often touched uh, surface areas such as door handles, kitchen surfaces, uh, but do keep in mind that this has very strong properties and can strip wood, can strip varnishes. So if you are going to use a high percentage of rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol that you make sure that you are putting it on a surface that will not become damaged from using such a product. Hand sanitizer within your home daycare is optimal for parents who are coming in and out of your home. So for us and a lot of the daycares uh, I work with, they keep a bottle conveniently at their communication center next to the door when parents are coming in and out. So when uh, parents are dropping off, they can easily uh, sanitize their hands. So if they're coming into your home, their hands are clean before touching anything in your home. And then if there are any germs within your home, they can sanitize their hands as they're leaving. Think of it as like a doctor's office. Your, your home daycare is your office and if you are going to the doctor you generally see a doctor who comes into the room and sanitizes their hands and then when they leave the room they sanitize again. I know as home daycare providers we always want to be safe and have optimal cleaning procedures but in today's time with the coronavirus we want to be that extra careful extra safe and take those extra steps to make sure that we are keeping our homes and children and yourself safe. Okay so now that we have all of our supplies we have a mixing bowl we have a one-third cup, we have a spatula or a spoon, we have our rubbing alcohol, our isopropyl alcohol, and we have our aloe vera. And just for a special touch, we also have rose extract for our essential oil. So the first thing we need to do is put in our alcohol. Now I do not have a two-thirds cup, so I have a one-thirds cup. So what we're going to do is put two of these, since it's one third. And we're just gonna put that into our mixing bowl. 
Again, because the alcohol is pretty strong, make sure you are working on a surface that if there is any splashing or uh, dripping, that it is not gonna cause any damage to your countertop surface. So that's two thirds. So the recommendation is two thirds of alcohol and then one third of your aloe vera. So I don't wanna contaminate my aloe vera, so I'm just going to scoop it out and put it in my mixing cup, like so. I got this aloe vera uh, when I was actually making facial products for myself and happened to come in use for this as well. Um, and I also got it on Amazon, so it's super easy to find and you might even have it, you know, when you get a sunburn and such. So now we're just gonna mix it in our bowl. Make sure you get it all out. Now in my experience with making this, you're not gonna get as gel of a consistency as you do when you get an actual hand sanitizer bottle, um, like the travel size kind. But this will help break it up and protect your skin versus putting alcohol directly onto your skin. And again, this is 70% and not 91 or higher percent of isop um, <laughs> it's a hard word to pronounce, isopropyl alcohol. So it's not as strong, but like I said, the CDC does recommend at least 60% or higher. And here I have, have my rose essential oil. I'm just going to put a couple drops of that in there. So we have a nicer aroma versus that sterile medical rubbing alcohol scent. Just gonna mix. And now we're ready to pour it into whatever dispenser you would like to use. Today the dispenser I'm gonna use is actually just a leftover dispenser from a, a body spray. And this has a pump on it, so it'd be easy to spray your hands. Um, because it is a little more liquidy, um, I like this option better versus in a droplet bottle because then it won't be spilling all over the place if it's a thinner consistency versus the standard gel that you generally find in a travel size hand sanitizer dispenser. Now I do not have a funnel, but if you had a funnel, that is what you would use to put this in. So I'm going to do this really quick over the sink and I'll be right back. All right, I have put our solution of the aloe vera and the rubbing alcohol into our spray bottle with our rose essential oil and now give it a couple pumps awesome ready to go rub your hands again make sure it is dry you do not want to start touching things until it's dry because when it's dry is when you know that it has set in and is being effective that's it it's very simple very easy the hardest part right now is going to be to source your materials since the coronavirus is spreading quickly unfortunately throughout our country and the world some of these supplies are becoming limited less and less and less so my suggestion is if your local stores are out of hand sanitizer to look for isopropyl um, rubbing alcohol that's at least 60 percent according to the cdc a lot of recipes out there are calling for 91 to 99 percent um, concentration levels also get an aloe vera gel and then if you want to add a little bit of aroma it's much nicer with a little bit of aroma, so you can get some essential oils to mix in there as well. This is a great thing to keep on hand, whether we're in flu season or not, just to keep on hand at your home daycare, so you're keeping everyone and yourself and your home safe. All the best to all of you, and make sure to subscribe to learn any more tips and tricks how to run a successful home daycare. Like I said, I've been doing this since 2008, and there's a lot I've learned, a lot of mistakes I've made, and a lot I have to share with you. Till next time, bye. It's also called isoprol. Isop. It's also called isopil. 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 I isoprol. Isopropyl. Isopropyl. It's also called isopropyl. Isopro. It's also called isopro alcohol.